Chapter 7 The Exercise of the Will Pure religion has to do with the will. The will is the governing power in the nature of man, bringing all the other faculties under its sway. The will is not the taste or the inclination, but it is the deciding power which works in the children of men unto obedience to God or unto disobedience. You are a young man of intelligence. You desire to make your life such as will fit you for heaven at last. You are often discouraged at finding yourself weak in moral power, in slavery to doubt, and controlled by the habits and customs of your old life in sin. You find your emotional nature untrue to yourself, to your best resolutions, and to your most solemn pledges. Nothing seems real. Your own instability leads you to doubt the sincerity of those who would do you good. The more you struggle in doubt, the more unreal everything looks to you until it seems that there is no solid ground for you anywhere. Your promises are like ropes of sand, and you regard in the same unreal light the words and works of those in whom you should trust. You will be in constant peril until you understand the true force of the will. You may believe and promise all things, but your promises or your faith are of no value until you put your will on the side of faith and action. If you fight the fight of faith with all your willpower, you will conquer. Your feelings, your impressions, your emotions are not to be trusted, for they are not reliable, especially with your perverted ideas. And the knowledge of your broken promises and your forfeited pledges weakens your confidence in yourself and the faith of others in you. But you need not despair. You must be determined to believe, although nothing seems true and real to you. I need not tell you it is you yourself that has brought you into this unenviable position. You must win back your confidence in God and in your brethren. It is for you to yield up your will to the will of Jesus Christ. And as you do this, God will immediately take possession and work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Your whole nature will then be brought under the control of the Spirit of Christ, and even your thoughts will be subject to him. You cannot control your impulses, your emotions, as you may desire, but you can control the will, and you can make an entire change in your life. By yielding up your will to Christ, your life will be hid with Christ in God and allied to the power which is above all principalities and powers. You will have strength from God that will hold you fast to his strength. And a new light, even the light of living faith, will be possible to you. But your will must cooperate with God's will, not with the will of associates through whom Satan is constantly working to ensnare and destroy you. Will you not, without delay, place yourself in right relation to God? Will you not say, I will give my will to Jesus, and I will do it now, and from this moment be wholly on the Lord's side Disregard custom and the strong clamoring of appetite and passion. Give Satan no chance to say, You are a wretched hypocrite. Close the door so that Satan will not thus accuse and dishearten you. Say, I will believe. I do believe that God is my helper. And you will find that you are triumphant in God. By steadfastly keeping the will on the Lord's side, every emotion will be brought into captivity to the will of Jesus. You will then find your feet on solid rock. It will take, at times, every particle of willpower which you possess. But it is God that is working for you. And you will come forth from the molding process a vessel unto honor. Talk faith. Keep on God's side of the line. 
Set not your foot on the enemy's side, and the Lord will be your helper. He will do for you that which it is not possible for you to do for yourself. The result will be that you will become like a cedar in Lebanon. Your life will be noble, and your works will be wrought in God. There will be in you a power, an earnestness, and a simplicity that will make you a polished instrument in the hands of God. You need to drink daily at the fountain of truth, that you may understand the secret of pleasure and joy in the Lord. But you must remember that your will is the spring of all your actions. This will that forms so important a factor in the character of man was at the fall given into the control of Satan, and he has ever since been working in man to will and to do of his own pleasure, but to the utter ruin and misery of man. But the infinite sacrifice of God in giving Jesus, his beloved Son, to become a sacrifice for sin enables him to say, without violating one principle of his government, yield yourself up to me. Give me that will. Take it from the control of Satan, and I will take possession of it. Then I can work in you to will and to do of my good pleasure. When he gives you the mind of Christ, your will becomes as his will, and your character is transformed to be like Christ's character. Is it your purpose to do God's will? Do you wish to obey the Scriptures? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There is no such thing as following Christ unless you refuse to gratify inclination and determine to obey God. It is not your feelings, your emotions, that make you a child of God, but the doing of God's will. A life of usefulness is before you if your will becomes God's will. Then you may stand in your God-given manhood, an example of good works. You will then help to maintain rules of discipline instead of helping to break them down. You will then help to maintain order instead of despising it and inciting to irregularity of life by your own course of action. I tell you in the fear of God, I know what you may be if your will is placed on the side of God. We are laborers together with God. You may be doing your work for time and eternity in such a manner that it will stand the test of judgment. Will you try? Will you now turn square about? You are the object of Christ's love and intercession. Will you now surrender to God and help those who are placed as sentinels to guard the interests of his work instead of causing them grief and discouragement?